Hey guys, my name is Alex Chacon, and today I'm going to share my experience I had when filming my last video in Giza, Egypt. First, let me say that this incident should not discourage you from visiting Egypt or the pyramids. The Egyptian people as a whole are some of the friendliest people you will ever meet. So, this is what happened. Do you not have identification? I've done nothing wrong. One minute, one minute. Yes. Hey. Yes. Did you just touch me? I had just visited the pyramids, filmed an entire video there, and then decided to do a video about Giza itself. As I was walking just outside the pyramids, a guy started following me and told me, no pictures. He was in civilian clothes. I kept walking because this was strange and felt exactly like it was when I got mugged in Paris. So I told him that many people had cameras here and this was a public road and he responded by flashing his gun at me. As I started filming, him, he left. Eight minutes later, I had two unidentifiable men following me. No, it's public road. I have done, I have done nothing wrong. You gonna show me your gun too? To avoid any confrontation, I jumped on the horse carriage to take me back to my hostel. A police car immediately stopped the carriage and told the owner that if he took me home, he would arrest him. But until another guy in normal clothes caught up with me and we were all alone in an alley. Now I got a guy with a gun following me. Why, why, why are you following me? You have followed me for 15 minutes. I didn't have to call You're harassing uh, General, me. General, police. No, I've done nothing wrong. Uh, in the hotel, sleeping hotel in, in, in the area? Well, no. Away, away, away. Why do you want to know where I'm sleeping? Uh, uh, hotel. No, why? You have your gun, right? Uh, where's, uh, your, where's your identification? Uh, uh, General, do, you, do you not have identification yeah, card? Do you have food. ID card? I don't know if you're a police officer or not. A gun doesn't tell me that. This is a public area. Everybody has cameras. Why are you following me? Stop harassing me. Go away. Please go away. No more. Thank you. The questions were invasive, unreasonable, and frankly, quite dangerous to answer. He never answered why he was chasing me or harassing me. Why do I need to identify my nationality and tell a random guy with a gun, with no identification, where I'm sleeping? I genuinely felt harassed and honestly that my life was now in danger. By the time I was walking to the main street, I had one police car and 15 different individuals after me. I wasn't filming when this happened, but to stop me from walking, the police car drove straight at me with clear intentions to hit me. But I quickly moved and he rammed me into a corner and his vehicle into a parked car. For reference, in most countries, this is assault with a deadly weapon. I was then forced to confront the mob that was after me, and I tried to reason with him, but again, it was useless. No one gave me a reason why they were after me. Random civilians got involved, and it got really messy. Yes! Hey! Yes! Did you just touch me? Did he just touch me? Did you touch me? No, 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 no. This no man touch just touched you. me, no and touch I have you. it on video. No touch you. I recorded no, no, him. No, no, no. I recorded him touching me. Stop harassing me. No, no, no. Touch. You're, no touch. No touch. You're lying no to touch. me. Who are you? No touch. Who are you? Who are you? This uh, police I am police, police man. Yeah. Where's your Where's your badge? And the Canada. Badge. What are you saying? I don't need to talk to you. Okay, okay. I've done nothing wrong. You touched me twice already. One minute. You have touched me twice. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. What are you doing? Nothing. Well, I'm trying to walk and film. What's your nationality? Doesn't matter what my nationality is. What's your what is the problem? I'm going home. Thank you guys. You've been listen, very kind. Listen. Thank you. You can go home. You can go home. That's the third time you touch me. You are you police? No, no, no. No, 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 no I'm just I'm translate. I'm just please. translate. I, this is an official matter now. I cannot translate. All right, but I was then forcibly detained. That means I was grabbed physically by two men, including one guy in a white uniform. He knew he messed up when he looked at me and saw I was filming him, so he ran off and I didn't see him again. This mob was now jeopardizing my safety, and it felt like I was about to get robbed and beaten as people were yelling and grabbing me. I continued trying to get away from this dangerous situation by calmly walking away, until finally a uniform officer in another police car showed up. He asked me not to film. At this point, I stupidly agreed, and he said he was a captain of the area. I repeatedly asked him to show me his identification and for everyone else to show me their identification as well, which everyone refused. Again, I asked why they were harassing me. Again, I was not given any reason. 10 minutes later, he finally showed me one of his subordinates IDs. It was frail, sun faded paper that really didn't look official. He then escorted me to his police station and office where he asked me the same questions. Where are you from? Where are you staying? Again, I refused to answer without being given a reason as to why I was harassed and assaulted several times by his officers who wouldn't identify themselves or even tell me why they were chasing me. He finally came up with a weak, completely untrue reason and excuse that I wasn't allowed to film or photograph anywhere in the streets of Giza. I couldn't help but laugh and remind him that I was in the public area with lots of other people with cameras doing the same exact thing. This was the pyramids of Giza after all, the most visited tourist site in the world. Again, I asked him why me? No answer and wanted to see my pictures on my camera. 
I refused again. After 10 more minutes of interrogation, I decided to tell him where I was from because I knew this could change everything. I said I was American, and within five minutes, I was given food, water, freshly brewed tea, and the red carpet was rolled out for me. He became the friendliest, nicest man in the world and started apologizing for the misunderstanding, saying his officers were just trying to protect me and make sure I was safe. All this after I told him my nationality for the first time, of course. He asked to see my pictures on my camera again, and I obliged. He knew I filmed something, but wasn't quite sure what, and so I told him I'll show him everything if he lets me go home. He agreed that if I didn't have anything of his officers, I was free to go. Obviously, I did. He was trying to erase the evidence, but I knew I had to keep the footage to tell the story. So I played the game. I went as slow as humanly possible, showing him every single second of every single clip I had. Cows, the streets, the horses, Finally, the last clips of the ordeal were up. By some act of luck, he said, okay, that's enough, don't need to see anymore. Just barely missing and seeing these clips. It was apparent he was tired and I wasted enough of his time. He realized that he and his people made a big mistake, tried to make it up by being nice and finally letting me go. I said thank you and have a nice day. Okay, so let me explain exactly what I found out later on after I brought this to the attention of my Egyptian friends and officials. First, it is not illegal to film on the streets of Giza. I didn't fly a drone or film government buildings, which is illegal. I did absolutely nothing wrong in this entire situation. I later learned that the government tries to keep such issues like sanitation, living conditions in Giza a secret to the public. I mean, just look at my last video on Giza itself. Doesn't exactly make the place look great. Second, I was stopped, harassed, and cited as a threat, perhaps even a terrorist, because I was a single male with a beard that looks Middle Eastern. My Egyptian friends tell me that they themselves experienced the worst treatment by police in their own country. And this kind of treatment is very common for Egyptian men, I'm told. The number one tactic of these police is to intimidate you and scare you into doing whatever they want and answer any question by showing you their gun and harassing you. I knew that I needed to stand my ground after my risk assessment of the situation. Filming this was a calculated risk, but I did have in mind that I could be unlawfully arrested, detained, or even worse, shot but I knew I needed to tell the story. I did everything right in this situation. I remained calm the entire time. I didn't yell like everybody else was yelling to me. I asked the right questions. I knew my rights and the law, and I never ran away. I felt if I did, I might have been shot. Also, if I hadn't jumped out of the way of the police car, I could have been killed. That's no joke, that was a real possibility of happening. When I asked the captain about his officers grabbing and assaulting me, he was more worried about deleting the footage than acknowledging the mistake and apologizing. In the end, I felt violated, scared, threatened, and this was an unsettling experience that showed me the ugly reality of how police profile, handle, and unjustly deal with their mistakes, and even their gross use of power. Again, don't let this stop you from visiting the pyramids or getting to know the Egyptian people. I personally still recommend it, and I would go back again. I had an incredible time and a great positive experience overall. But keep in mind, if the authorities don't like the way you look, or if you're a single male with a beard and a camera walking the streets, you might be in for a surprise. So, thanks for joining me for this video. See you next time.